Hi, I'm Keith, and this is Roll to Discover. Today I'll be talking about character creation in the Cypher system, and I'll use my own game, Bumps in the Dark, as an example. So before we get started, let's talk about concepts. And for me, all, really when it comes to character creation, I'm, I'm very role-playing centered. So character creation starts with the role-playing concept. So Bumps in the Dark is a urban fantasy set in the modern world. So if I was creating a character for that, my character could be anything that I could think of in the modern world. And I would use like TV shows and movies and books as my character, my character inspiration. Maybe I'm going to be a police officer. Maybe I'm going to be a scientist. Maybe I want to be a mad scientist. Maybe I want to be a doctor. Maybe I'm a psychologist. Maybe I'm a car thief or a jewelry thief. I can think of all these different things I can use in the real world. And, you know, when we're thinking about those, we can also fine tune them. Like, oh, I want to be an archaeologist. But are you more like Indiana Jones or Laura Croft? Or are you like Nick Cage from National Treasure? Like, which one are you Which one are you kind of leaning toward? Or maybe it's none of those above. But kind of come up with that concept in your head of what you want to think about. Now, in the Cypher system, they have uh, basically a sentence that describes your character. And it, the way to think about the sentence is if you remember Mad Libs, like when I was a kid, we had things called Mad Libs. They're still around, I think, where they just had uh, you, you put in a noun or a verb or an adjective and then you strung them together at the end and told a story, which was pretty hilarious. In this case, we know what each of those places are going to be. So the sentence we're going to be working on is I am an adjective noun who verbs. All right. So what that really means is I am an adjective. Adjective is a, what we call our descriptors. They kind of define a little bit about what we're going to be. Nouns are our type. Those, if you're thinking of like Dungeons and Dragons or other role-playing games, it might be close to your character class. Oh, that's kind of a, not a great uh, analogy, but it's kind of close. And verbs, verbs are our focus. It's kind of what we do. It's what we specialize in. So let's look at types. There are four types, warrior, adept, explorer, and speaker. The warrior type solves problems with physical skills. The adept uses magic or the occult. Explorers rely on both their mind and their body to uncover the unknown. And speakers are more likely to talk their way through a situation. Now, I'm not going to explain every option available because there are tons of them. Instead, I'm going to put all that information that you're going to need on the Roll to Discover website. That's rolltodiscover.com. And you'll be able to find it right there. And it'll go into great detail on what the warrior is, the adept, the explorer, the speaker, what all their abilities are going to be. We're going to cover the, the high points today, though. That's the noun of our Mad Lib sentence. Okay. Uh, the type offers suggestions for your role in the world, world similar to a class in other games. Uh, if I'm playing a warrior, then that, could be a, that could be a soldier. That might be a police officer. That might be the bouncer at the local bar. But you could fine-tune those however you want. Uh, your type defines your starting stat pools and gives you some points to customize it. So uh, in the Cypher system, each character has three stats. It's might. Think of anything that's strength or endurance based uh, is going to be driven by might. It's physical. Speed is your agility, your balance, your speed. Uh, anything that's going to be like coordination and flow of motion is going to tie to speed. And the last stat pool is intellect. That is your mental skills that would be your intelligence your wisdom your charisma anything that's kind of in your mental or social aspect at the beginning your type defines 18 points that are pre-assigned to those three uh, stats might speed or intellect you get an additional six points you can put wherever you want so if i'm playing a warrior and i want to dump all six of my points in might i certainly can but if I want to be like a charismatic warrior who might be more of a paladin type person, then, of course, I could put some of those points in my intellect to kind of raise up my social skills. So your type will help you define your effort, the edge, how many ciphers you can have, what sort of weapons you're comfortable with, what your starting equipment is, and what your special abilities might be. So let's talk about effort. Effort allows you to expend Expend points from a stat to make a task easier. So if I am swinging a heavy sword and I want to try and make that a little easier for me, I could spend three points from my might uh, to increase uh, my chance of hitting with that sword by one. And when we increase our, our chance of hitting something or increase our chance of accomplishing a task, we call that easing the task. Okay, Edge allows us to reduce the number of points needed when you use an effort. So if I'm a warrior, 
my edge is most likely going to be in might, which means that if I'm trying to use my strength to make a task easier, it's going to cost me two points, not three, like which is a normal cost. Ciphers are like cool gadgets or powers you can have. Most ciphers are single use. We have abilities. Abilities are those things that you can do that makes your character special. And characters have tiers, sort of like levels, and you get different abilities at different tiers. Okay, uh, Each tier grants you access to a new group or special ability. So we have types. Those are our nouns. That's our warrior, adept, explorer, and speaker. Next, we have flavor. Flavor is an optional way to customize your type by leaning it in any different direction. It provides a list of special abilities that can be swapped out one for one with a special ability from your type. You can pick which ones you want to swap, but once you make that swap, it's permanent. You can't go back and get that stat again, or that ability again. There are five flavors. So stealth, technology, magic, combat and skills, and knowledge. If you're thinking of D&D, you might want to think of these kind of like subclasses, but they're really just a way to redefine the type so it's unique for your character. So a warrior type with a combat flavor is pretty redundant. It probably isn't something worth doing, but a warrior with a stealth flavor might be a ninja. A warrior with a magic flavor could be like a battle mage. A warrior with a tech mage, uh, technology ma flavor might be one who yeah, maybe uses battle armor, like combat uh, tech armor with there, or is, is more like a, a Batman type person who's going to use his technology to control how he flavors his combat. So flavor is really a way for you to kind of customize that type, make it more of your own. They're completely optional. You don't have to take them, but if you want to, they are there and available for you to kind of fine tune your character. Uh, that's not part of our sentence, by the way. When we think about our sentence, which is an adjective noun who verbs, uh, our noun is our type. Our flavor is just kind of a further dis description of our type. Then we have our descriptor, that's our adjective. Uh, and there are tons of descriptors in the cipher systems. Uh, and uh, here are a couple of examples. It could be like brash or calm or chaotic or charming and clever, uh, like literally tons of them. It describes how you are likely to approach a situation as well as provide suggestions for how you got involved in the first mission with the team. Uh, descriptors also offer a one-time package of extra ability skills or modifications to your stat pool. Okay. Uh, next, we have our focus. So go back to our sentence. Remember, it's I'm an adjective, noun, who verbs. Our adjective is our descriptor. Our noun is our type, possibly modified by our flavor. And our focus is our verb. It's what we do. It's actually not, not just what you do. It's what you do better than anyone else. In fact, in my game, no two characters should ever have the same focus. I think it detracts from the, the character itself. We want every character to be unique and strong and have this moment where they can shine. So each character should have their own focus. Your focus is going to give you another set of special abilities that you'll gain automatically as you reach each new tier. And they will be added on to the special abilities that you have based on your type and your focus. They're not a one by one swap. These are new ones that get added to your existing level of list of abilities. It also lists a complication that GM can invoke. When a GM invokes a complication, it's called an intrusion. It's one of the ways you can earn experience points. You earn experience points by accepting it, or you can expend experience points to avoid it. So with a, an intrusion, maybe you are trying to chase down someone in, on, in a dark alley. And the GM can make an intrusion that says that you come around the corner and there are two gang members that you had an altercation with earlier in the adventure and they're there. And the GM tells you that's an intrusion. You get two experience points for that intrusion. One goes to your pool. One you give to one other member of the party, whoever it's going to be, for whatever reason you want to give it to them. You're just going to give that other experience point to somebody else. And you get to have that encounter with those two gang members. Or you can say, nope. I don't want that to happen. I'm going to expend the experience points. Uh, the GM will then say there were no gang members there. You turn around the corner and it's safe and clear and you can still see the guy you're chasing. So intrusions are a way to add some additional flavor to the game while giving you some experience points in the process.
So our sentence for our character could be, I, uh, I am a descriptor type who focuses. So that's my diff different uh, characters I have. We have abilities that come from our type. We have abilities that come from our focus. We have abilities that come from our flavor. If we take that option, you might also gain abilities from your descriptor. There are more than a thousand abilities in the game. Just focus on the ones that are appropriate for your character. Don't try to use all of them. Your equipment, your uh, character type will suggest some starting equipment for you. Generally, it's going to be things like you can have two items that are inexpensive, two items that are moderately expensive, and one item that's expensive. It's going to be something along those lines. It's not going to be very, it's not going to give you a lot of details for it, but it's going to give you some general suggestions for what, what it's going to be. Something to keep in mind is equipment in the Cypher system plays only a small role. It's far more important to focus on what you can do than on what you have. Uh, in my game, I don't want to spend a lot of time on shopping and inventory management on equipment that makes sense you have it you most likely have it as long as it's like mundane equipment but if there is going to be some specialty tools that you're going to want to make sure you have so if i want to make sure i have a grappling hook and some rope that's kind of a specialty tool something that the average person is not going to carry around with do you need a notebook and a pen do you need to worry about no if you send me tell me you have a notebook and pen i'm perfectly okay that you probably have that it makes sense that you might have that connections are how you fit into the setting your type has some connections for the world around you. It's kind of how your character fits into the world around you. Your focus lists connections that you can have with other players. So think about this, the, the connection from your type is how you fit in the world. Your connection with your focus is how I interact with everyone else, how I got to know them. Uh, when it comes to focuses, there are tables in the Cypher system rules. You can randomly roll from the tables. Uh, you can pick one from the table if you like, if your GM likes, is okay with that, I'm perfectly okay with that. You can come up with a suggestion on your own. So if you look through the table and says, nope, I don't like any of those, feel free to come up with your own suggestion. Talked a little bit earlier about intrusions. So intrusions are a way for the players or the GM to alter the state of the world. When a GM triggers an intrusion against you, you earn two experience points. One you get to keep and one you have to give to another player. When a player triggers an intrusion, they have to pay one experience point. But you can change the state of the world. And your type will provide a list of intrusions that you can use. But you're also came come up with others that fit the scene. By the way, your GM always has final say on intrusion. You can't just spend one XP and have Godzilla appear and stomp on the bad guys. I mean, clearly that would be an intrusion, but it's probably outside the scope of the game unless you have some logical reason why you have access to Godzilla. Now, imagine you, Godzilla is the name of your pet dog you've had him with you all the time he's and he is kind of your guard dog and you say oh yeah uh i left godzilla in the car but i am now i'm going to call him i'm whistle for him he's going to come out and, hit, and save the day so you can spend that one xp your dog godzilla runs out of the car and starts snapping at the guys and chase them off that sounds like a perfectly good use of uh, a player intrusion uh, i talked a little about ciphers as well i talked about that you have a limit to number of ciphers you are your type determines what those are ciphers are one use abilities that characters pick up during the play uh, and if you're thinking of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, or any like any really any fantasy type game, this could be like a magic potion, a scroll, uh, something that you would use, and it would go away right away. Uh, when, when it's a physical item, something we can carry or drink or manipulate with our hands, we call that a manifest cipher. When it's something that is uh, more intellectual or mental, maybe it's a moment of insight, maybe it is. Uh, I touched a strange pylon and now I have a gift to interpret some language in the future. Uh, we call those, but it's not a physical thing we, we deal with, it's just something we know we have access to. We call those subtle ciphers and uh, subtle ciphers aren't something you can pick up, but they are inherent to you as a person. The number of ciphers you can have are of course limited by your type. Let's take a look at a sample character. I wanna play a college student who has studied witchcraft. I'm a little bit reckless, and I'm often looking before I leap. That's my RP concept. Before I even set down the game, I kind of have this feel for what type of character I want to play. So looking through the different options I have for type, I see I have I have warrior, I have adept, I have speaker, and I have explorer. I feel like adept is the most uh, reliable for me, so my type is going to be adept. Uh, I'm reckless and looking before I leap. I think that qualifies as chaotic. Uh, and uh, I want to have studied witchcraft, so I've mastered spells. So my character sentence is, 
I am a chaotic adept who masters spells. That describes who I am. So chaotic, you know, let's go back and look at chaotic again. Chaotic in the game terms means that danger doesn't mean much to you, mainly because you don't think much about repercussions. In fact, you enjoy sowing surprises just to see what will happen. The more unexpected the results, the happier you are. Sometimes you are particularly manic, and for the sake of your companions, you restrain yourself from taking actions that you know will know to lead to disaster. Right? So I'm going to be chaotic. I'm going to be a little reckless, but I'm not going to drag my part, my party into true chaos because I don't want to get them into trouble. I'm an adept. Adepts master the power or abilities outside of the experience, understanding, and sometimes belief of others. These might be magical abilities, their psychic powers, mutant abilities, or just a wide variety of intricate devices depending on the setting. Uh, magic in the cipher system is a generic term used very loosely. It's catch-all for the kind of wondrous possible supernatural things that your character can do that others can't. It might actually be an expression of technological devices, channeling experiments, mutation in psionics, nanotechnology, or any number of other sources. So I master spells. So by specializing spell casting and keeping a spell book, I can quickly cast spells of arcing lightning or rolling fire or creeping shadows or summoning uh, whatever whatever I, comes into mind with this, right? So again, my character concept is I'm chaotic adept to master spells. Each one of those things has a set of skills or attributes or uh, stats that are associated with them. And once I know what they're going to be, I'm just going to take those and put them onto my character sheet. So again, I'm not going to go into the detail on all those specific things. I made that available to you to look up pretty easily on rolltodiscover.com. I think that's the best place to do it. That way you can pick and choose through your character sheet to see what's going to work best for you. I hope you found that helpful. To summarize, come up with your character concept. Fill in the noun, which is your type the adjective, which is your, your descriptor, and the verb, which is your focus, into your character sentence. Follow the directions in each section, whether it's your type, your descriptor, your focus, to fill in your character sheet. It's really that simple. My final word on this is don't stress the rules. There are thousands of options here, and we start combining together, it gets ridiculous. Make sure you pick a concept that you're going to enjoy playing. Find the thing that's closest to it, and run with it. Trust me, whatever you pick is going to be fine. It's going to be perfect. And that's it. So take care. Good luck on your game. Talk to you soon.